This penny stock has been growing extremely fast. And in this video, I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know about this investment opportunity. Now, 99% of penny stocks are not good companies. Typically when people say 99%, they're joking. But in this case, 99% of penny stocks are actually not good companies. There's a reason why they're called penny stocks, because at the end of the day, they're just traps. They're companies that are burning through money and with no real growth outlooks, no real promise. Now, I think with this one though, we might actually have something interesting going on and I'll show you why. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the financial analysis and everything you need to know about this stock from a financial standpoint. Now, with that being said, this is going to be part of a two video series. I haven't quite decided if I'm gonna make the second part yet, but if you guys like this video, go ahead and drop a like and comment down below if you want the next series to this video. If it's in demand, then I'll go ahead and drop the second series. But in this video, I'm going to go over the whole financial analysis and I'm going to show you why this is actually an interesting opportunity for a penny stock. Now, if you've already subscribed to this channel and you already watch all my videos, you'll know the first check that we always do for every single penny stock we look at. You remember what it is? Yep, it's exactly it. We look at the balance sheet. For every single penny stock that you look at, the number one check that you need to do is check out how the balance sheet looks like. Because if you just remember in the beginning of this video, I said 99% of penny stocks are terrible. They're not good companies. The reason why is because they burn through cash flow and they don't have any assets on their balance sheet. Those are what we call ticking time bombs. It's only a moment before they blow. So at this point, I should probably give you the ticker symbol for this company. The ticker symbol is going to be CTRM. Okay, so CTRM pretty much is an ocean transportation company that transports dry bulk cargoes across the world. So it operates in multiple regions and it's not just a local company. This company provides transportation for dry goods. And this is dry cargo, including iron ore, coal, grains, steel, fertilizer, cement, I have no idea how to pronounce that, sugar, and metals. The company operates three Panamax vessels with a carrying capacity of approximately 76,000 dead weight ton. The company was founded in 2016 and its headquarters are in Cyprus. So that should tell you every single thing you need to know about what this business does. Now, how do they actually make money? The way this company makes money is it charges a fee based on the amount of cargo that it actually transports. So the main thing they need for their operations for their business is ships. They need ships because once you have the ships, you can transport more and more goods. Now, this is not rocket science like some of the other companies I cover, where you do have to look into the science of the company and the research they're doing. This is very simple. The company transports goods on their ship from point A to point B, and it makes money depending on how many ships it has available and how much goods they can actually transport. Now, Let's get into how much money they've been making. And this is where things actually do get pretty interesting. So if we take a quick look at their income statement here, you'll see the company has been growing tremendously. They've grown from 1.9 million in revenues in June 30th, 2019, all the way to 5.3 million revenues in June 30th, 2020. And one thing to keep in note, guys, is this is for the first six months of each of these years. So this is only the six months of 2020. They made 5.3 million in revenues. And the first six months of 2019, they made 1.8 million in revenues here in that top line. Now, the if you keep on going down, you'll see their expenses. So you can see here the company grew revenues a lot. It's almost, you know, they were able to three times their revenue almost from 1.9 million all the way up to 5.3 million. That's great if you're a company that's just starting off. Now the question is, are you able to also keep your costs low while increasing your revenues as fast as you are? Let's go ahead and look into that piece of the equation as well. So check that, check out this line item here that says expenses. The expenses section here in the middle of the picture is going to show you what they've been spending. So voyage expenses is now 259,000 from 57,000. The vessel operating expenses is 2.6 million from 874,000 and management fees and depreciation and amortization make up almost a million and this is up from about $400,000 last year. Now also check out the general and administrative expenses. 
The company spent about two hundred thirty-seven thousand in GNA costs over the last six months of twenty twenty. Now, if you go ahead and check out their total expenses, their total expenses came in at four million dollars for the first six months of of twenty twenty, and the total expenses came in at one point five million in the first six months of twenty nineteen. So. The expenses have definitely grown quite a bit as the company is making more and more money in revenue, which is understandable. As the company is getting bigger and they're selling more stuff, they have more expenses they have to pay too. That's how every company works. Now, in this instance, you can see here that Caster Maritime was able to make $1.2 million after all its expenses. So that, that is up significantly from 300,000 in the first six months of 2019. In the first six months of 2020, they made $1.2 million. <clears throat> so how was the company able to make so much more money than it was last year? Well, if you remember the first part of this video, we simply broke out what the business does and how they make money. They just need to have ships that transport goods. Well, recently they have bought a couple of ships and those ships allowed Caster Maritime to increase the amount of money they can make because they can transport more goods. So now they're making a lot more money than they were last year. But we can't get too ahead of ourselves here because there is a huge red flag that we just noticed while going through these financials. So if you keep on going down, you're gonna see the company made $1.2 million in operating income for the first six months of 2020. But the problem here is in order to increase the revenue like they did and buy those new ships, the company had to take on $1.6 million related to interest costs from all the debt that they had to bring on. So this means that all, after all the debt that they brought on to buy those new ships to help grow the business, they now have $1.6 million in interest that they have to pay for, to keep the business going. And this is just for the six months of 2020. That $1.6 million completely wipes out all of the operating income the business was able to generate. This is a huge red flag because a company as small as Caster Maritime cannot have that much, cannot afford to pay that much money in debt. It needs that cash so it can keep on growing. But unfortunately, they have a ton of debt on the books. So now where does that leave us? In order for this investment to really be like a 4x, 5x, 6x investment, they need to take care of that debt. And that's what I'm going to keep my eye on in the near future to see if this business can pay down that debt that they have and lower that interest expense. Because if they do, then you guys will make a lot more money because now they will have paid off their debt and they have lower interest expense, which means they have more cash to pay for all the other stuff they need to pay for. Now, what's also interesting here is this business is continuing to grow. I showed you how they continue to increase revenues and they were able to buy ships to help grow the business. Well, just over the past few weeks, we found out that they've been buying more ships. So Caster Maritime has signed agreements that will have it acquiring two ships. And these ships are 2005 Korean built Aframax LR2 tankers. The company is buying these ships through its subsidiaries. Now, at the end of the day, they're saying that they have to pay a total of $27 million for these two ships. And this acquisition deal is set to close right here in this quarter, the first quarter of 2021. Now, this is great news for the company because if they're able to keep producing increasing revenue, then we're gonna keep making money as investors. The big problem though, is that interest expense that I just talked about. Well, if you remember, they got that interest expense because they were buying ships. They couldn't afford the ship, so they had to take out debt so they can afford the ships to keep making more money. Well, now we see that they're buying even more ships. The problem is, are they taking out even more debt to continue buying these ships at really costly interest expense? If that's the case, then this investment might be a little bit too risky. But if the company is able to pay for these in just cash, then this actually might be great going forward. And we know that they actually could pay for these in cash. If you look at the balance sheet, just in the first six, if you look at the balance sheet at the end of June, 2020, the business had about $30 million of cash on hand. We don't, now we don't know exactly what it is currently as of now to date, but if they just had the same amount of cash that they have 
about six, seven months ago, then they can definitely pay that $27 million for those new ships. And if that's the case and they're not taking on any interest expense, then this might be a really interesting investment that could have huge returns in the future. So with that being said, to sum up everything we've gone over in this video, you have a company here that has really interesting growth opportunity. They've been able to grow their revenues and their income significantly over the past year, and they have a lot of cash on their balance sheet, and now they're buying even more ships to make more money. The only problem and the biggest risk here is that interest expense. This business is paying a lot of money in debt to go ahead and buy these ships. So we definitely need to look out for the next earnings call, and we need to look more into the financial results to really assess is this business going to be a 10 times penny stock? Now, if you want to get into that second piece and the second piece of analysis, like the video, comment down and let me know. And I can go ahead and create a part two for this where we conclude all our opinions. But as of now, this business is definitely an interesting opportunity and they have some promising growth outlooks ahead. Go ahead and like the video, subscribe and comment down below. And I'm going to catch you guys on the next one. Peace.